Okay, the next item on our, <coughs> excuse me, on our agenda is uh, 413 Maple Avenue. This is a request for a conditional use permit to install a wireless telecommunications facility within a residential zoning district on a joint utility pole in the public right of way and in an equipment and an equipment resi <coughs> residential zoning district, uh, excuse me, sorry, and in an equipment area in the rear yard <coughs> of 413 Maple Avenue. Per sections 12.220 and 12.84.160 of the San Bruno Zoning Ordinance. Matt? Thank you. Um, as stated, the applicant has applied for a use permit to install a telecommunications facility within a residential district. The site itself is located in the public right-of-way adjacent to 413 Maple Avenue. The proposal calls for an expansion to the existing utility pole. Um, specifically, three antennas would be installed on top of that utility pole, which would be um, enclosed by a radome. And the radome essentially serves two purposes, one to protect the antennas, and secondly, to screen the antennas from public view. Excuse, excuse me, through the chair. Uh, could you move a little closer to the microphone? For some reason, it's a little faint today. Definitely. Is that a little bit better? Slightly. Okay. Thank All right, you. so not only it, the radome will enclose the, uh, protect the antennas and shield the antennas from public view, and additionally, the associated equipment cabinets would be located um, in the rear yard of 413 Maple Avenue and would not be visible from the public right-of-way. Um, additionally, two two-inch conduits and one five-inch U-guard would be present on the site. This is similar to any other public utility pole that you would see in any residential neighborhood. And one GPS downlink antenna would be installed on top of that radome. One thing that is important to note is that this is essentially the replacement project for the 1736 Niles Avenue site that was originally denied by the Planning Commission March of earlier this year. Um, the primary reason why that application was denied was due to the lack of stealth design. Um, specifically, there was four equipment cabinets located directly at the base of the pole, which really didn't belong in a residential neighborhood and was very bulky. As such, the Planning Commission denied that project due to the fact that it wasn't meeting the stealth design. The proposal before us tonight differs from that application as the associated equipment cabinets are not installed on the base of the pole, but are actually installed to the rear of 413 Maple Avenue, thereby completely screened from public view. Um, the applicant, um, the project was heard at the Architecture Review Committee meeting in October. And at that meeting, the Architecture Review Committee agreed with staff's recommendation to move the meter that was originally attached at the base of the pole to the rear yard of 413 Maple Avenue. The applicant has since updated the application and you have the updated plan set in front of you tonight. Um, overall, the Architecture Review Committee did support the application and forwarded it on to the Planning Commission with a favorable recommendation. Staff did send a 300-foot courtesy notice and the required public notice and we have not received any comments. Um, overall, staff does support the application. We do find that it meets the stealth design. Once again, those equipment cabinets will not be located on the pole. They will be located in the rear yard of 413 Maple Avenue. And we have included conditions of approval requiring that the pole extension, the U-guard, and the radome be painted to match the utility pole. Overall, staff does support the project, and we do recommend that the Planning Commission approve the use permit application subject to findings of fact one through six, and conditions of approval one through 14. <coughs> I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, good report. Good Chair. Commissioner Marshall. Matt, are there um, any pictures of the equipment box? I don't, I mean, I don't see any pictures on, in my package unless I miss one. It would be, I don't believe there's any photo simulations of the equipment box, seeing how it's not visible from the public right of way, but we do have an actual foundation detail for the equipment enclosure on page A4 the equipment plan and it has some it has some elevations for the equipment there as well um, how about like setbacks I mean do we have do we so have do we have anything in our codes for setbacks for we equipment would treat like it like an accessory structure and it is a, it's more than six feet away from this uh, from the single family home at 413 Maple and it is more than one foot from the property line okay so I mean we, we have specific setbacks and all that stuff. okay and so if, if, this, if the property owners ever decided to do any remodeling or additions to their, their house, 
this this would come into play on something like that. Yes, it definitely would. And they would always have to keep a minimum of six feet away from this structure. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Through the chair. Mr. Peterson. In the uh, staff report, it says <coughs> each antenna would measure approximately two feet three inches tall and seven seven inches dash zero inches wide. What does that mean? Those, those would be the dimensions of the antenna itself. I you mean there seven, is seven feet, zero inches? I, I believe that's a typo then. It would be seven inches deep. It's seven inches wide. What page is that on? <laughs> it says seven inches. It's on page three of ten. It's got the inches quotation mark next to seven. It says seven inches dash zero inches, but I'm trying to understand oh, yeah. what it means. Feet. It's just a typo. It's seven, seven feet. Seven feet? No. No, I'm sorry, seven wide. No. Okay, two feet three and seven inches wide. Right. Zero inches wide. Be one wide antenna if it was yeah. seven feet. That's what I was it trying to understand. Are you sure it isn't two feet three wide and seven feet tall? I, I'm trying to figure out. The antenna is not seven feet tall. It's not. No, it, okay. no, it's not. Wouldn't it be nice if there were uh, all decimal figures? Uh, you can see it. You can see a, what page uh, is it on? A five. There's actually an antenna detail and a mounting detail. So the antenna. I don't see any dimension on the antenna. Or I see an antenna mount detail, an antenna detail. The antenna detail says it's 27 and a half inches tall and 3.15 inches wide. Is that right? Is yes, that, that how is you correct. Read so it? it's incorrect within the staff report. The, the detail on A5 that you just read is correct. So it would be 3.15 inches wide, 27.5 inches tall. You're correct. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a structure with three antennas. But well, I'll tell you what, why don't we have the applicant, the applicant come up and, and give us a little clarification on this, since it is their um, antenna. Good idea. Thanks. I mean, everybody's got to climb on my back, but I didn't say it. <laughs> Good evening, Honorable Chair, Commissioners. My name is Misako Hill. I represent T-Mobile West Corporation, located at 1855 Gateway Boulevard, Concord, California. I'm here tonight to request approval of T-Mobile's proposed uh, telecommunications facility on a utility pole adjacent to 413 Maple Avenue. Um, the antenna measures. Uh, 27 and a half inches tall, 6.65 inches wide, and three inches deep. And that's indicated on <clears throat> page A5 of your drawing, um, the middle section of the right hand side, left hand side, as noted antenna detail. I just have some slides that I quickly wanted so, to. Through the chair, if I could, just to make sure I understand this right. Mm -hmm. An antenna, uh, the antenna itself will not appear visually as a unique object. It'll appear in an antenna grouping of three antennas. Yeah, so there's right? a total of three antennas measuring that, uh, those dimensions, grouped in a circular pattern, enclosed in a radome shroud. Right. On the radome mounting detail on the bottom uh, left-hand side towards the center. And so that radome, the dimension of that is what? The radome measures approximately, um, I believe it's uh, 16 inches wide by uh, 45 inches tall. Very good. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. <clears throat> okay, let's see your slideshow. So I'm just going to briefly go through the, the project. Um, this is a coverage map showing the existing coverage uh, currently in the area. The site 
project site is right here along Maple Avenue near Niles. So the, the, the coloring indicates, <clears throat> the yellow indicates in-vehicle service, green in-building coverage, and the, the gray is on-street coverage. The purpose of this site is to improve in-building coverage to this area. So this is a slide showing the proposed coverage area, which is this mainly this green area, but it also includes some of the yellow area. So this is pretty much the, the range of the, of the proposed facility. I have slides going through um, several uh, alternate site locations that we looked at. Um, I'm not going to go through those in detail. They are indicated, there's eight sites indicated in the staff report. Uh, but if you want any clarification on them, I'm happy to go through those. Um, I'm going to focus on the current proposal. So this is a photo sim showing the, uh, what the uh, proposal will look like. So this is, the, this is a joint pole. It was selected because it utilizes the smallest equipment available to provide service to the search ring objective. The proposed antennas will be installed at the top of the existing joint pole at a height of approximately 48 feet, 11 inches, and the profile of the existing pole will be maintained. No new pole will be built. The proposed antennas on top of the pole will be screened uh, with a cap that encases the antennas, which we call a ray dome. Uh, thus, they are not visible. Um, as noted by Matt, the there will be no associated equipment on this pole. All the equipment will be located on the ground in the rear yard of 413 Maple Avenue. Um, this project differs from the previous project at 736 uh, Niles Avenue that was denied in that nothing will be installed on the pole as previously uh, uh, applied for. Um, I'm joined here tonight by Raj Matur, who is with uh, Hammond and Edison. He provided uh, the noise study and the EMF report. And I'm also joined uh, by Amr Karaba, who is the T-Mobile RF engineer. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you or staff may have, or um, my colleagues will be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. So, <coughs> any uh, questions for the applicant from the commissioners? Through the chair. Mr. Johnson. Since this happens to be on private property and it's not visible, um, can you just give me a, a brief overview of how do you monitor that the property owners are maintaining, uh, adhering to your guidelines? Uh, keeping my, what I was reading, they need to stay six feet away from proposed uh, equipment. And how does that, uh, the, they can't the, build near it. They can't, what other types of things can they not do? As I understand, our facility needs to be, be maintained um, six feet from the uh, existing building. Um, so we, it's going to be built upon a uh, cement foundation and then fenced screened with a fence so sure. it'll it'll stay fixed permanent in one location i um, can see that you're doing your part and should the property owner decide to put in a, a shed and it happens to be halfway into that do you monitor that or is that something that oh definitely yeah we have a, a a lease agreement with the owner regarding the equipment and so any anything that affects the location of that equipment or impedes the use of that equipment then we would have to have prior approval and then also a technician uh, visits the site uh, less than once a month but if they if there's any issues when they go to visit that site that impedes the use of the equipment or access to the equipment then we would bring it up with the owner but we have an agreement with the owner and um, they uh, they understand you know how we want to use and access that so they you know, more than likely will not impede that okay. use. Mm -hmm. And then if should you find something not being in compliance with you then, uh, of course you've done all the appropriate steps with the owners, would you uh, notify uh, the planning department? Uh, since we, it's, it's come before us as planning commission, if it's not in compliance and no longer meets the, what we have approved and what you have requested, and if it's not in, no longer in compliance, do you then uh, have steps in place to notify? 
the planning department. If the neighbor install, mm -hmm. or the owner installs something that's not in compliance. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if the person going in the back would know if any structures were not in compliance, but only if it impedes, you know, access to our facility. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure if we would, we would try to work it out with the owner, but I guess, mm -hmm. guess in the end, yeah, if there's an issue, we would bring it up to the city. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Through the chair. Commissioner Pearson. <clears throat> the, there are some figures in the staff report about the noise level of the facility. Yes. Can you tell me what frequency the, or fr what frequency range the noise will be? I'm going to have uh, Raj Matur address that issue. He's the, the noise engineer. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is uh, Raj Mathur. I'm with Hammett and Edison. We're an independent consulting engineering firm located in Sonoma. Uh, I'm a licensed professional electrical engineer in the state of California. Uh, the equipment has uh, cooling fans, so that's the uh, type of noise you hear is typical noise that comes from a fan. It, it's in the audio uh, frequency range. So that's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that would be the frequency range. Mm -hmm. That's a very wide uh, range, 20 to 20 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual that that's uh, listed as a range of human hearing. Can you be any more precise than that? Is it like 4K to 6K or 18 to 20? Um, I don't really know any more precisely. Uh, the, I mean, certainly if you're interested in that, we can find specifications for fans and provide them to you. But generally, uh, the best I can do is the audio frequency range. Okay. The yeah, reason I, mean, the, I the ask is the reason I ask is mm -hmm. because uh, frequencies. In the, in the lower range, mm -hmm. say about the size, uh, uh, about the range of, a, of a, a, a bass vial, for example, mm -hmm. those sounds don't ca carry very far at all, but higher sounds like 12K, mm -hmm. those, those even a quiet sound will carry quite a distance. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the staff report indicates that your facility is in compliance with the city's regulation, mm -hmm. but I was interested in qualitatively what the nature of the sound would be. Um, I'm trying to understand if it would go a long way and maybe if there were a malfunction with a fan, you know, if, for example, if a fan blade is bent a little bit, it makes a lot mm -hmm. more noise. Mm -hmm. And if it's a high pitch noise, it would carry more. Mm -hmm. So let me ask another question. Mm -hmm. The fan devices, is this area um, muffled at all from the location of the fan to where people would hear it? Um, yes, there's, uh, I believe there's two barriers there. There's a, the, the fence, and there's a metal casing, and then there's a wooden fence. So there's two structures between the fan and the outside of the enclosure. Is that what you were asking? Yes, very yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds pretty good. And, and is there, uh, is that metal enclosure, I guess, would I, is it correct that the fan is used to ventilate it, so the fan has to be able to have free air to, to move air into it, and then there has to be another grill where the air can leave. Is it that sort of thing? That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Any other questions of uh, the applicant or the commissioners? I, I do have one, <clears throat> and that's just um, in regards to okay, <clears throat> the ad, you know it's going to go in the, in the backyard of 413 Maple, correct? Correct. correct. So you entered into an agreement with those individuals. Correct. What about people who live behind them or is there you know a home that's within the same distance from where your proposed 
you know, mechanical equipment's going to be at Fort Thirteen's backyard versus whatever home is on the other side of that fence. Are they aware of? We have not entered into agreement. I did. Um, I did contact uh, that owner regarding uh, leasing equipment in the rear yard, and I did not hear back from them. So what happens if they build an accessory structure that's closer or you know gets within six feet of your equipment box? Then, then what happens? There's or a fence. Uh, through the chair, the, sure. the, the six foot requirement is actually the city's requirement for accessory structures, not T-Mobile's technical requirement for their, it, correct me if I'm wrong, T-Mobile's technical requirement for, for their facility. Okay. So what we have is a six foot separation requirement between a home and your accessory structure. So it just so happens the, this time the accessory structure is the T-Mobile facility. So six feet has nothing to do then with how it would impact your equipment? No, that was okay. a setback requirement for the city. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Okay. All righty, well, um, <clears throat> thank you very much. And at this time, I'm going to open it up to the public. Is there anybody from the public wishing to comment on this, um, on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public uh, <clears throat> section of this uh, particular item and bring it back to the commissioners for discussion, action. For the chair. Commissioner uh, Marshall. I have a question for Aaron, just uh, for land use. I if this is a R1 neighborhood and we're allowing a uh, resident to lease out a portion of their property to another entity, w where does that differ from someone trying to, you know, split their lot, you know, and rent out as two units or could I rent, can someone rent out their garage to somebody else legally or? I think the, in, in this case, the difference is that this is a telecommunication facility. Um, which is, you know, la allowed under a federal act within residential neighborhoods that trumps uh, local local law. Um, so that that's one reason uh, people are allowed to do commercial activities. You know, there's a limited scope of commercial activities that you could do in a residential neighborhood. You can, you know, you could have a home-based business. You could have a senior care facility. You could have a daycare facility. But so there are. Rent, but there can you rent that facility? Can I rent my, half of my house out to someone to run a daycare center? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I mean, okay, someone. Okay. Yeah, someone can. It's just it's a, it's a residence. You have a home daycare. I mean, there's people who rent homes, and they rent. They have a residential daycare facility there. So you, the the land use itself is is independent of who actually owns owns the the building or the property. Okay. So it was, I didn't read all the findings that closely, but it's one of them that it, that it is a uh, utility. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the findings are specifically for telecommunications facilities. Okay. Through the chair, did we close the public hearing? We did. Okay, let's check it. Through the chair? Commissioner should be signed. Aaron, on, as I look at this, you know, the, the site, the footprint of this itself is not that large, but I really think we should consider a condition of approval that um, that square footage become part of the cumulative square footage calculation like we do for other remodels because this will be, for all intents and purposes, a permanent structure on that property. So I'd like to see that as a condition of approval on this. We will, and it, it'll be included in future floor area assumptions, lock coverage assumptions, everything like that. Thank so. you. Uh, I have a question then. <clears throat> if the current homeowners who have entered into an agreement with T-Mobile sell their house, then the next person who buys the house is pretty much stuck with this particular unit in their backyard um, how is, you know, just hypothetically, maybe, I don't know, but how would that then down the road affect, you know, the next person who, who, who buys the house or whatever? I mean, they that's, would, that's why I'm saying we should consider it as right. part of the square area ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they would just, all land use entitlements run with okay. the land itself rather than with the property owner. So they would inherit all the conditions of approval, the entire entitlements and probably the lease revenue as well. So. Well, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not worried about that, but <coughs> so now I understand where Commissioner Biasati was yeah. going with yeah. his line of questions. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or through the chair? Yeah, Commissioner Biasati. I, I think it's appropriate and important to say that I think T. Bumble's application has been a dramatic improvement from previous applications. Uh, I think that while my personal sentiment is that. Devices like this are better located in commercial districts 
or, or on commercial buildings or on public buildings. But as far as that goes, that if, if it's uh, the law permits them in a residential zone, I think, I think you've done a pretty good job. The one thing I think, uh, and I can't say I'm completely disappointed, but I, I do have a concern about, and I think there's a substantial potential for improvement. <clears throat> there are fan, ventilating fan designs that are, that are tremendously quiet compared to other designs. For example, a centrifugal fan is a pretty quiet fan compared to an axial fan. And I, I'd like to uh, ask that the city uh, pass this observation on to T-Mobile so that <clears throat> the next time an application comes, which I suspect there will be one, that you, I'd like you to consider that. Uh, and I, I think uh, on balance, though, this, this is a dramatic improvement, and I thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments or actions? Or? <coughs> We're right open here. Do the chair. Commissioner Johnson. I move that uh, the Planning Commission approve use permit 10-020 based on findings of facts 1 through 6 and subject to conditions of approval 1 through 13. Second. Four, 14. Right. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Seeing none, it does pass. There is a 10-day appeal period and... Um, you know, it, it is a vast improvement over the first two that, that came before. So thank you for the effort that you put into it. Thank you.